Hey guys, I had this fun idea for Valentine's Day to make a giant heart-shaped box of chocolates. So let me show you exactly how I did it. So I went looking for supplies. I was going to use foam core, but then I found these big, I mean, look how big this is, huge presentation board, and it's already this gorgeous red color. So this is going to be my base, and I'm going to do some cutting from here to make the heart. Okay, so I've cut two hearts. Um, this one I made as big as I could without going across any of the creases on the board, but it wasn't quite big enough, so I actually made one a little bit bigger. And it does have the crease, but I have an idea for how to take care of that. But the point is, I'm gonna flip this over so you can see, um, one of them is a little bit bigger than the other. And that's what you need. Uh, because if you think about it, you know, a heart-shaped box has that lip on the edge. Um, so this one is going to be my base, and then this one is going to be the lid, so that that way it can go over top and be a little bit bigger. So to create the sides, I made a bunch of three inch strips. And it's really important here to make sure that the, uh, the channels, I guess, and the corrugated cardboard go this way, because then that will let me bend, bend. See that I can actually curve it because I need this to be curved, right? Because it's gonna go along the sides and it has to go around this curve. So you want the cardboard to work with you. So that's what I'm gonna work on now, kind of curving these around. Okay, so I've got these pieces curved. My plan is to put this on here and curve it around to make the sides, and I'm gonna use some uh, red duct tape to attach it. So that will build out the box. Okay, so now that I've got it, you know, sort of tacked down with tape, I'm gonna use some bigger pieces of tape um, and just kind of finish the edge off and get a nice border. Fortunately, this tape matches the uh, cardboard really well. You can see now I have a nice finished border, so I'm gonna do that all the way around to really seal it in. Okay, so I've got my box made. Now I'm going to just super secure it here in the inside with a bead of hot glue. Um, just right here where the joint is, kind of hold it in place just to kind of get all of that locked in. Um, the tape is going to do a pretty good job, but I think a little glue will be better to hold it. Okay, so I've got my box sides done, um, but the inside is pretty ugly, right? So I got this uh, trim, like that, you know, that goes around bulletin boards and schools and stuff. See how it's got this wavy line here, but I'm not going to separate it because I need it to be wider. Um, I think I might actually put a piece of tape on the back to hold it, but I'm going to put this on the inside so that the box looks pretty and gold on the inside, right? But before I do that, I want to take care of this edge right here because it's kind of this rough cardboard edge. So I think I'm going to put another strip of tape across this to cover it up so that the gold can go right up against it. Okay, so I took my strip, I taped it together on the back, and then I measured the inside of the box, how high that was, and I cut this to the right height. And I'm going to put the nice factory finish edge on the top, and I'm just gonna line the inside of my heart with this and hot glue it in place. Okay, so my base is done now. Look at that, look at that gold trim, isn't that awesome? All right, so this is the bottom, nice and solid. I need to make the top for it. And you remember, I cut this big piece that's gonna go on top, right? And it's a little bit bigger. See how cool that looks? But it needs to have a piece that slides down over this. So rather than trying to do it on here, which will never work, I'm gonna take some of my pieces and I'm gonna actually create a collar that will fit around this. And then if I glue the collar to the lid, it should slide right on perfectly. So let's work on wrapping to make a temporary collar. Okay, to build this collar, I'm gonna start with this face down like it goes, this face down like it goes, space it out perfectly. Then I'm going to take my cardboard piece um, with the nice sides down. So it is gonna go here and it's going to attach to this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape it onto here with this in place. And I think that is the trick I need to uh, get some little pieces of tape here. That is how I will get this on here. Okay, I've got that secured all the way around. Now I can take this out. Right? Now let's flip it over 
So there's my bottom of my heart. Here's my new lid, which should fit perfectly. Excellent, right on top. Okay, now I got a little more work to do though because I want this lid, it still has this crease in it and I wanna take care of that. So I'm gonna put an extra piece of cardboard here just to kind of secure it so that that doesn't bend. And I think I might run some hot glue around the edges too, just to really lock it down. Okay, so I did a little more work. Um, remember how the lid has this overlap that comes out, which is appropriate for the box, um, and then the bottom didn't? I decided the bottom needed to have that same overlap, so I just cut a big piece. I actually pieced a couple pieces together. Um, I traced this heart shape so that it would match. And it's going to go there, and I'm going to glue that down in place, and then when the lid goes on, which should fit perfectly, there we go, then I have a complete box, right? Because that's how the box is actually supposed to look, top and bottom sticking out. So I'm just gonna glue that together and then the base of the box will be done. Okay guys, look, I did it. I made this giant, as big as me almost, heart-shaped candy box. Um, I love it, I love how it came out. It's got the inside with the gold, the top fits down. It's very plain though, right? Um, you know I'm not gonna leave it plain, I am gonna decorate it and Oh, maybe not today. I don't know. See if I get a second wind or if I wait till tomorrow, but there's some cool stuff coming on here. So stay tuned. Okay, guys, I'm ready to decorate my super plain box. I've got a bunch of uh, satin fabric. I got some light pink and some dark pink, and I'm using it to make um, a box pleat ruffle. So lots and lots here. I've got the dark pink already done. Um, I'm going for a very vintage retro, uh, tacky you might say but cool decoration like this is going to go on the box around the edge it's going to be super awesome so i've got the dark pink ruffle i'm working on or that's done the light pink that i'm still working on and then i also got this white lace that's going to go on there yeah this is going to be pretty cool i'm going to finish putting all this together and then start attaching it to the box okay so i put a row of pink and a row of light pink and then some uh, lace across the middle to cover my crease and then I've done the dark pink all the way around the edge and I'm getting ready to add the light pink on top. Um, I'm just hot gluing it in place. One little tip I want to show you. I noticed that after I glued the pink down this was unraveling a little bit because I didn't hem it. It's not a big deal but when I do the light pink I've actually folded it under on the back and hot glued it down. Um, that way I have more of a cleaner edge. The lace will cover it, but this will keep those flyaway threads from happening. All right, all of the border is done. All three layers, ribbon, ribbon, and lace. And now for the middle, I have this. I got this giant foam, um, it's kind of foam rose at uh, the craft store. Look at that. It's perfection, right? Does that not look like a genuine old uh, classic heart-shaped candy box. Now let's get back to the candy. Okay guys, I've got my base here. Now I need to get some candy in there. Um, it needs to be pretty big candy and it needs to have liners, right? So I got some cupcake liners. That's what I'm going to use actually for the candy liners. Um, these are like only black on the outside, which is annoying, but I found out that if I turn one inside out and put them together, I can get black on both sides. So that'll work fine. Um, to make the candy, I'm going to use floral foam. Um, styrofoam is fine, but it costs more and it's harder to work with. It's harder to sand and you get bits everywhere. But floral foam is kind of nice because you can actually squish it and shape it. See how it, it just bends? All you have to do is rub it with your hand to sand it, basically. Um, so I'm going to be able to cut this. It's going to be super lightweight. I can make little candies to fit in there. So I'm going to get started on that. I got a lot of candies to make. Um, but I got a lot of foam, so I'm going to be all right. All right, so here's how I'm going to make these candies. I got this blade and I, uh, a box cutter and I pulled it all the way out so that I can actually slice. I'm going to slice, I don't know, maybe a little over about an inch thick. I just kind of go straight down. It's a little tricky to do one handed, you know. There we go. I have my piece and then I can cut it into a square. So now I have a nice little square that I can use in here as one of my candy pieces. Um, I'm going to cut them all first and worry about it later, the sanding. But let me show you, like I was saying that this is so easy to sand. You can just kind of rub this. See how nice that gets so rounded like a real candy. So I'm going to make some squares. 
I'm going to make some circles. I'm going to try to do different things um, and just fill this out with liners before I worry about actually coating them or treating them or making them look like candy. I'm going to work on the shapes. Okay, so I want to show you how easy it is to carve this foam into a candy shape. So I've got my box cutter again, um, very sharp, and I'm going to sort of use it as a paring knife. I'm going to turn this into a round piece of candy. So I'm just going to start by just cutting the corners off. But see how easy that cuts? I mean, that is so much easier than styrofoam. Um, just kind of round it, little light cuts. And then around the edge here, just sort of bevel that a little bit. And then when you have the basic shape, just start rubbing. I mean, your finger is enough resistance. You don't need sandpaper. There we go. It's a basic candy shape. I mean, that's going to be good enough. I've got round ones. I've got some little like cherry cordial shapes. I'm going to do some square ones like for caramels. I'm just going to make lots of candy. I need about 50 of them, I think, to fill this. So I've got a lot to work on. Okay guys, I have made all of my little candies. I've got some squares, some circles, all these different shapes. Um, now I've got to move on to the next step, which is to finish them. This is a pretty uh, close textured foam, but it's still porous and I need to finish it with something. So I'm just gonna put a, a regular stick in here just to make it easy. Um, and then I'm just gonna cover it with some gesso, just some white gesso, just sort of brush it on. Um, this will seal it up nicely, but what's cool about it too is because it has some texture to it, I can actually achieve sort of a melted chocolate kind of textured finish, right? Um, these are all supposed to be chocolate covered candies, so they're not going to be perfectly smooth because chocolate never is perfectly smooth. So I'm just going to kind of cover this. I'm not going to worry about the bottom. It's not going to show. Um, let's get this brushed. So see, then I can just kind of, you know, get a nice texture, maybe a little swirl. There we go. And I'm going to leave this to dry um, and I'm going to do the rest. Okay, I finished all of my candies. Um, I'm really happy with how they came out. I've got them sitting in front of my space heater, though, um, kind of rotating that around because I want this to dry so I can get going. Okay, so my candies have all dried. Um, got a nice finish here from that gesso, so I'm going to paint them. Um, I actually started out using spray paint for this because this seems like a good spray paint kind of job, right? The spray paint did not react well with the gesso, I think because maybe the acrylic and uh, the way that the paint, I don't know, it just did not work. So I'm having to hand brush these, but that's okay. It won't take too long. Um, it might take two coats to get good coverage since it's got that bright white base. But I'm really digging how it looks so much like chocolate. Um, it'll be like a satin finish when it's done. So I'm gonna do two different colors, like a milk cho chocolate and a dark chocolate. And I'm just gonna let these all dry and keep on going. Okay, so I just finished the second coat of paint on my chocolates. I've got half dark chocolate, half light chocolate or milk chocolate. So this just needs to dry. Um, I think I've got all the pieces together. Now it's time to put the candy in the box. Um, I'm putting each one in a uh, black cupcake liner and just tucking it in. I'm going to dry fit everything first. Look at that. Look at all the candy in there. Um, once I make sure that it's all going to fit, then I'm just going to put a little hot glue, glue each piece to the liner and then glue the liner to the base. And then that will fill out all of my chocolates. Okay, I'm ready. I'm done. I'm ready to show you my finished box. Of course, we have all this beautiful decorations that I put on there. And now when we open it up, we have all of this chocolate. 